Welcome to this rapid revision session on Anglo-Saxon government. Let's have a look at the Anglo-Saxon earldoms. You can see one of them on this map here and you might want to list them or make your own version of this map. Northumbria was in the north, Mercia was in the middle, East Anglia was in the east, Kent was down there in the southeast corner and Wessex was in the south and west. The green areas, the darker green areas anyway, represent places that were not part of the original earldoms but they often came under Anglo-Saxon control. So for example, most of Devon and Cornwall, uh, Wales remained basically independent uh, and Scotland was its own separate nation as well. But the main earldoms are listed there in the other colours. After the fall of the Roman Empire, various tribes of Angles, Saxons and Jutes invaded. Over the centuries, several kingdoms formed. This was known as the Heptarchy or the Seven Kingdoms. These were the basis of the earldoms on which Saxon government relied by the time of our course in the 1060s. North of the Dane law, that's this line here, the customs, traditions, taxes, laws and language were more influenced by Norse and Viking culture. This is a hangover from the times where the Danes or the Vikings had invaded the north and a peace settlement had allowed them to hang on to this before it was eventually conquered by the Anglo-Saxons. So that at a glance is the system of earldoms in England. So let's consider the strengths and powers that the earls had, but also what were the limitations of their power? In order to aid the king in governing the country, the earls were given many of the king's powers. Firstly, wealth. Earls received one third of the money raised by taxes. They were supposed to use this wealth to ensure their earldom was well defended and well run. Law and order. Though the king made the laws, the earls made sure that the law was obeyed. They decided who was guilty or not in their earldom. Armies. Earls were the lords of too many thanes and also maintained an elite bodyguard of professional soldiers called housecarls. The king used his earls like generals. They were his military leaders against the king's enemies. When a king was strong, as Canute was for most of his reign, the power of the earls was definitely less than that of the king. A powerful king like Canute would demand obedience and would punish those who failed him. But a king like Edward the Confessor was not so strong. He spent most of his time in exile, out of the country, or in prayer, and did not have the support of hundreds of important followers in England. It seems likely that he had to depend on Earl Godwin in particular, and we'll have a separate lesson on the Godwins. When Edward brought Normans to, into important positions in the English government, Godwin and other earls were not happy and resisted their appointments. They worked together to get the Normans sent back to Normandy. However, the earl's power relied on the support of the thanes in their earldoms. We know this because of occasions when thanes demanded that earls be removed from their positions. This happened famously in 1065 when Earl Tostig, the son of Godwin, lost his earldom and went into exile after protests from his thanes about the way that he governed his earldom, Northumbria. Again, there'll be a future lesson where we look at that in detail. So firstly, let's have a look at some of the strengths. Receiving one third of all money raised by taxes is a definite strength. As is the fact that they maintain an elite bodyguard and they've got the support, hopefully, of their thanes. However, there are weaknesses too. People like Canute punished people who failed him. And also, thanes could demand that an earl be removed from his position. There's more up there, but that gives you a bit of an idea. Final points then. Saxon England was split into earldoms. There they are again. Northumbria, Mercia, East Anglia, Kent and Wessex. The Dane law split England into culturally Danish and English sections. Earls would help enforce the king's laws and collect taxes, raise armies, but they could also challenge him, which was a limitation on the power of the king but a strong king could easily keep their earls in check. After all, they relied on loyalty to maintain their positions. Loyalty to the king, but also loyalty from their thanes. That's the end of this rapid revision session. Hopefully it's given you some useful and interesting points. And if you've got requests or other things that you would like me to cover in these rapid revision sessions, please comment in the comments below. And remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much for watching and goodbye.